the creation of an ego. So it's not out of the question that it would create a new personality in the same body. I can see them like encountering a lot more of these failed experiments. In other words, it wasn't a split personality disorder in the show's mind, but two completely different entities in the same body. The original show and the personality that was created when the plume of dust was put inside him that now calls itself just According Minazuki. The Minazuki. After the operation, Minazuki entered a vegetative state after some time. Thus, Ikutsuki let go of Minazuki. He was then transported to a hospital in the suburbs of Inaba, and there are no records of Minazuki from there on. What happened from that point on, I can only speculate. But I wonder what sort of life Minazuki led after he regained consciousness. When did he regain consciousness? Because why wouldn't he? Why wouldn't we have seen him anyway? But Suru's expression softens. Even if Minazuki was created by Akutsuki, this is just one last way that Akutsuki's ghost still haunts us. Akutsuki's research only followed similar experiments created by the Kirijo group. If Shou's past is as Mitsuru describes, then he's yet another victim of the Kirijo group, not just an enemy to be defeated. Not long after we pass through the main entranceway, we see a path leading to the school's main gates, which are painted in a strange pattern. Beyond that, nothing but red fog. There's no telling what the state the town is in right now. Labra said that she wanted to speak with Minazuki. And now, so do I. We'd better rescue Yukiko's group and get back here then. Indeed. Let us accomplish our duties with haste. There's no point in denying that Kirijo is partly responsible for this series of cases. That truth won't change, and it's obvious that this is weighing heavily on Mitsuru's shoulders, since she is the head of the Kirijo group now. That's why I believe I truly understand how Mitsu felt when she made the choice to step back from the front lines earlier and trust in her comrades. That's how it should be. Our teammates are all reliable people who will follow our lead. Fuka, what's Yukiko's position? Um, I sent something southeast of there. Please be careful. Here's that shaking, yep. As Fuka's communication cuts out, the school building behind us makes a groaning sound. It's so loud now, I get the feeling that there isn't a lot of time left. Mitsuru and I nod to each other before we begin running towards town. Alright. Huh? I was gonna say, it has to continue. Oh! Okay. I see. Labrys is a group. I forgot about them. I'd say that's gonna continue that line, which could spoil events that happen here. So we'll go ahead and start this one. The only character I like in this entire group is Labrys. When it comes to gameplay. So if they let me choose, I know who I'm picking. The five of us who had been entrusted with pursuing Shokun are proceeding towards the top of the tower. How many floors have we climbed already? Distorted hallways and classrooms appear at every turn, and there's no sign of us reaching the end. And there's the earthquake-ish thing. The quakes are growing more and more frequent. I guess this one's a chance. Go away. You know, Go away. the Nazuki guy talked about making his world, but how is he going to do that? If we presume he's following in Akutsuki's footsteps, then he's going to gather shadows, I love this song, merge though. <laughs> them, and summon some great power. You mean that thing the Nazuki kun was talking about? What do you think, Junpei? I mean, you've been surprisingly quiet. Are you not feeling well? Huh? Nah, I'm fine. Coaches are well trained, you know. I guess it's just that I'm feeling all tense. All this end of the world stuff isn't anything to joke about. I've got yeah, you guys have went through it once. Like the kids have a game coming up next week, so there's no way I can lose here. Stupe's being serious for once. Looks like he's grown up a bit. Well, I guess I should learn from his example. <laughs> not really, he hasn't changed that much. You don't want the world to end either, do you, Labby-chan? You just woke up after all. Yeah. I don't want to lose this world after I've met everyone. I gotta do my best. 
and the final boss continues to round. Wait, didn't we see this classroom earlier? I feel like the fog's getting thicker too. A lot of the classrooms are repeating. Be good if this keeps up. Since we can't get a communication with Fukasan, we don't even know what's around us. No matter how far we go, the maze of the fake castle got behind just keeps going and going. The visibility inside is getting worse as well, and we even have trouble seeing the floor at our feet. We're starting to get flustered because we've had no sense of progress after all this time. Come on, keep your cool. Being all aggravated won't do us any good. You're so positive as always, Junpei san. You think so? <sighs> I think you've changed. Yeah, he was always well, so positive in Persona too. 3. Huh? Uh, why do you sound so relieved? Um, I've been wondering if I hadn't changed at all. I made a promise No, you're to useless, so you're basically the same. Child. What's that Sorry. supposed to mean? <laughs> I hate to break it Is to you. Is that hard to do or something? It's difficult. I don't know what it's like to be a child, so I wasn't sure if I should keep doing what I've been doing. Being huh. useless? I guess being an adolescent boy is difficult. You should just live your life the way you are. I mean, you are a kid. That's right. You can't trust Mitsuru Senpai's idea of childhood. Can you Seriously. Even imagine what she was like when she was a kid? Re I mean, really, though. Oh, like... <laughs> you're right. I can't. It's impossible for common people like us. Speaking of children, that show dude is the perfect example of a spoiled brat. At one moment he's joking around, and the next he's incredibly pissed off. Yeah. What would someone have to go through in order to make them seriously consider uh, destroying the world? Another conversation about this, what happened huh? happened to him? When the topic shifted to Shokun, Kuromaru-san passes us by and stops before one of the doors. What's up, Kuromaru-san? Is there something bothering you about this classroom? When I approach the door that Kuromaru-san is barking at, I see stairs leading up a stairway inside the classroom. And the opponent is! I'm sure that wasn't the only one who was hoping this was the place. Junpei Sock quickly opens the door and we step inside. Aside from the staircase, the room seems like a normal classroom used during daily life. Desks are lined up in rows and a blackboard dominates the front wall. I remember my own yearning to live a life including places like this. Even at a time like this, I smirk a bit at myself and just as I'm about to follow everyone to the stairway... <laughs> Like you've made it all the way here. Now what to do? Wait a minute, what? You're General Teddy! We finally found you. General Teddy, the mastermind of this tournament. With his cape and a fearless grin, General Teddy is completely different from the real Teddy we encountered earlier. And even though this even through the screen he has an ominous air about him. I check him with my sensor just to be sure, and sure enough, he's a shadow. No, this isn't a normal shadow reading. What in the world is this? This is getting out of hand. So I, General Teddy, will face you myself. Now bring on the ring! Oh, you're just regular Shadow Teddy. When General Teddy lifts his little hand up, the red pillars we're familiar with appear in the four corners of the classroom. The tension running through the area pushes away the feeling I had a moment ago that something's wrong. In any case, I have to change my way of thinking and prepare for battle. Now, it's time to have some fun. Those who hinder the creation of my world shall all perish here. If only he had actual Shadow Teddy's amazing Whoa, voice. Someone's got a big mouth. My world? <laughs> this has been our world from the start. We're not just going to let you destroy it that easily. Destroy? <laughs> I will not destroy it. This will be a new beginning. The beginning of a world of my own, where only I will live. Yeah, yeah. Typical villain speak. Only you? What about Sho? This doesn't concern you. The vessel will soon be complete. Nothing you can do at this point serves any purpose. We won't know that unless no we try. No Adachi in this Come part, though. Like in this entire like hell, we're gonna let you start anything like that. Needs more Adachi. Take this guy down and move on. Uh, Labrys. It's not even up for debate. I'm going to pick Labrys.
Is that the Beast and Heat? Is that Teddy's nickname? The Beast and Heat? How did I not notice that until now? That's gross. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Nice match. Well, I nearly get hit with a baseball. He recovered really well. That does not really work as a move. Persona for shit. Check it out. Boom! <laughs> <sighs> no matter. That was the limit of this temporary body. I've bought enough time. Villain speak. Huh? You're not gonna melt now? As Junpei saw notice, the fakes we've defeated until now have lost their shapes quickly after being defeated and melted into a black ooze before disappearing completely. But this General Teddy is just as confident as he was before the battle and has the same smile. I knew it. You're different from the other fakes. Who are you? Who am I? I'm General Teddy. Who else? Well then, Bye-bye, you pesky vermin! <laughs> Not gonna reveal your mastermind status yet? Well, it was a good time hey, to do it. Get back here! General Teddy swirls his cape about him with a laugh and disappears, vanishing into thin air without a trace. Uh, hey, Yucatan. He said something about a vessel being completed. Wasn't that kind of suspicious? Yeah, you think? it must mean that we don't have any time left, and when we defeated that General Teddy, he didn't disintegrate like the other fakes. There must be more to this case. Ken Kun is right. General Teddy is different from the fakes that we've been running into up until now. Plus, those words he said before fighting. When Azuki Kun said he'd make his world, and Shogun talked about my world. And yet, General Teddy said... Time for that. The final boss is calling for us. Who we also just battle technically. The quaking starts again. The blackboard and the podium rattle loudly, and some of the decorations on the walls fall down. The building shakes strongly and for a long time, as if asserting that the time is drawing near. Can you all hear me? You're very close. I'm getting a strong reading just up those stairs. Let's go. When we hear Fukusan's static communic, whatever the hell word is, we feel a sense of tension fill us. We steal ourselves and make our way up the stairs here in the classroom. No to be continued screen? At the end of this long, straight set of stairs, we find the door. When we open that heavy, cold door, we see... The hazy moon immediately grabs our attention, and seems much closer than when we had seen it while wandering the town. And then, there are countless crosses. They're the same as the ones that Mitsuru-san and the others have been bound to. These crosses are scattered around the avoid area we find ourselves no in. No way! Is this place... It, is this the moon viewing tower from Gekokan High? It seems this place is truly outside, and a strong wind blows at us. This must be a landing jutting up from the side of the tower. I see a number of oddly shaped objects around. From one of those places, I see a black shape flying towards us. When it lands, I see Sho Minazuki. That's right. It's where you killed Ikutsuki. This time, it'll be the place where you all die. See? I've already written what's going on your tombstones. It's some real poetical literature. Just kidding. Ugh. Shokun, please stop this. Minazuki is a better personality. Is this all because you hate us? Because we stopped Akutsuki? You really don't ever shut up, do you? I already.